There is this video circulating on social media mm -hmm. of a pastor in Kenya mm -hmm. who asked the members to fast till they meet Jesus Christ. And now, as I speak, about 90 or more than 90, they all died. And the rescue team even got to the field to rescue them. Some were even running because they still have to die. <laughs> if, <you're laughs> if your pastor is asking you to fast, and then meet Jesus Christ. What would you tell your pastor? Frankly speaking, I wouldn't fast until I die. Ah, you are not. You are not going to fast until you die. No, no. Okay. I, I'm just going to pretend I'm fasting and go home and eat. I will, you will pretend to your pastor that you are fasting and yeah. then you go home and eat. Do you know how long it takes for a person to die from hunger? How long? Ah. I've not died before, so maybe I have no <laughs> idea. It can take you. Anyway, this is the video from Kenya. Uh, a pastor asked members to fast until, I mean, they meet their maker. I mean, they are going okay. to heaven. Because they were supposed to go to heaven on the 7th of March. Yes. Uh -huh. On the 7th of March. So there so was a deadline to die. There was a day, yes, yes. They were supposed to go to heaven on the 7th of March. So one air hostess who was supposed to be part of that flight to heaven <laughs> threw up his uh, things and then joined the crew uh, on the 8th. She died with her child together nice boy they all died yeah because oh they, they're supposed to meet god i think on the 8th okay on the 8th of march okay so the fasting i think it started around january to <laughs> march okay because they need to die and then go you know what i'm saying all right so this is the video on the screen uh let me put the video on the screen so you you know that you get the idea of what i'm talking about it's a serious scene people even got to the scene i mean the rescue team they got there you see the video on the screen uh, they go to the scene and they found a lot of um, um a lot of dick and people who were part of this whole deal some ran and they were chasing them like please please come let's save you no 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 we have to die yeah they have to die you know <laughs> because they need to go is it biblical though i have no idea what's going on but you know the funny part the pastor did not die the pastor did not yes die. because the pastor is holding a bottle of water yeah the pastor you, you is can't drink water if you're hungry so i suspect he was eating. maybe he was not dry fasting so i don't know maybe. but still do you see how strong he is look look at look at them i just wanted to see the church members look some some this these are all dead bodies you know oh, these are all yeah. dead bodies these are all dead bodies they are taking them to the mortuary and then look this guy has fasted too <laughs> much you know <laughs> This is a serious he's, he's, issue, He's you know? struggling to walk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he even has a drip. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious issue, you know? And 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 then look at the pastor. The pastor is coming from the courtroom. And uh, he, no, he got bailed. But why now, is he now he's free. But why is he walking like he's coming from lunch, having lunch? No, no, he's coming because the, he was arrested and now he got bailed. Because there's nothing to prove uh, anything, you know? So the, the religion, the religion, the religion, the religion. And you see, this it's is that. Too fast. Yeah, this is she, this she, is she, that she, wanted to die, <laughs> and then the rescue team was like, "Please, let's save you. Please, my sister, we cannot leave you to die." You, know, you see, they are still advising him. Please go with them. Please, please go with them. Don't die. That's why they're giving them. So, drugs. so I want to know what exactly can the pastor tell these members that will make them think like, excuse me, say fools. From my experience as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like Africans, we are brainwashed. Too much, eh? Yes. And the other thing is we are so desperate. Um, I don't know, is it because of poverty? We end up doing things that you, you, you can actually see that this does not make sense. It's, that, it's not even biblical. Yes, but because you, you, you have so much faith and you believe that maybe if I do this, my life will change. You know, maybe if I do no, that. No, this one is not life changing. This one is dying. Yeah, you'll be told that everything. You, you know what these people do? Probably they were told to surrender everything, like all your, all your problems. But anyways, you used to be to a church. church. You used to be a church girl. I mean, yes. I talked to you some time way back, and then mm -hmm. you were telling me about you being a church girl. Mm -hmm. What happened? I was going to a certain church, and this pastor. He was a preacher, and he he was he was not a prophet. He was just a pastor. You would preach, okay. and we go home. Okay. All right. Then there's a time you just. Um, came on a Sunday and he said, I'm going to Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, I now have a spiritual father. The pastor father. said he's going to Ghana? Yes, he said, I'm going to Ghana. I now have a spiritual father in Ghana. Okay. Okay. He leaves for Ghana. He what was the name of that, this pastor? 
the the name of the pastor the one who went to Ghana he was called uh pastor dodo uh, why he's dead no he's there he's still I, alive I, I, yeah but i don't know if he's still a pastor i don't know okay so you went to see um uh, pastor boateng what which which boateng i am boateng so <laughs> i don't know if it's your uncle or <laughs> it's, he's called pastor boateng pastor boateng yeah that's the name pastor from, from boateng Ghana. yeah I you don't, don't even know the first name is pastor boateng no, yes I, spoke, I don't know the first name he's called pastor boateng the moment he came back he was now a prophet the moment he came from Ghana mm. now he could actually call you and tell you everything what you ate what you're thinking what and i we, while we sat down with my fellow worshipers and we were like okay i from the bible i believe that prophecy is an inborn thing you know you're born mm-hmm. a prophet mm-hmm. you don't just become a prophet overnight unless obviously um there's something that you're doing that's not right so for our own safety we just left the church because it was no longer making sense and now he's driving big cars he's you can just see that the lifestyle has changed he's now he now has money and is it reverend kusi boatin yes reverend kusi boatin precise yes ah yes. okay so your pastor had a, a spiritual father called reverend kusi boatin yes. in ghana yes and after yes. your pastor went to ghana to see his spiritual father that's reverend kusi boatin he came back and then he started prophesying. He, he came back a prophet. So, so you were you were lucky. You have a prophet. So, what's your problem? Why would I want to be told about what I ate? What I don't want to be told about things I know. Ah, okay. I, I, <laughs> why why should you tell me that you ate bread? Of course, I know it was bread. I ate bread. I bought it. I bought it. So, it's bread. so when when he came from Ghana to Zimbabwe, he was telling you guys what you eat. I mean, what you wear. You know, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You tell you okay. everything. And obviously all those things. They so the, the eyes has opened too much the level that you can even see what you guys do in your house. Yeah. Okay. So now you're thinking. So you were lucky to have a good boy, a good prophet. Well, there's no luck. Okay. There's no luck. What we need from God is salvation. Okay. We need deliverance. Mm-hmm. Okay. People are going through stuff, but you need deliverance. You need salvation. Okay. When you die, you go to heaven. But this thing of telling me um about things that i already know i'm seeing who's samson and you tell me a name of my brother or my my cousin or whatever so what meanwhile you know your brother is called samson I, I, of course okay i've been calling him that for the for more than 30 years so i know mm. so it, it, there's no point i feel like if you can't deliver people then pro- to me personally prophecy means nothing if, if there's no deliverance because mm-hmm. what you need is a change that's why you are going so that was that was when you started to say no no i'm, I'm done with these guys yeah I, mm. I just stepped out and i started worshiping god at home okay now let's come back to kenya <laughs> they are dead almost 100 <laughs> plus they are going to meet their maker they were supposed to meet their maker on the 7th of march but uh, maybe a flight delayed so they stood back and then until eight and then they started dying and i don't know who who created that host for them because i think when you want to die you just sleep in the hole and then you die you know what i'm saying so <laughs> to where they were digging them <laughs> they are, they are from their own grave you know what i'm saying so they were digging them before they got angry yeah? I, I, I you know i don't i don't know maybe they died in the in the, <laughs> i don't i don't know <laughs> I don't know how this whole thing happened. It's it's funny, but it's dangerous, you know. It is. Religion is a very dangerous uh, thing. They can be manipulating. People can just yes. manipulate your mind, tell you to do something, and all of a sudden you just go straight to do it, and then you are gone. Mm-hmm. And you from know? my thinking, I think they were told to empty their bank accounts. And exactly. This whole yes. air hostess sold everything yes. and gave it to the pastor. Yes, gave it to the pastor, surrender your but, but, life. But to- my problem is, if you are going to heaven, you are going to meet your maker. Why must you sell your things and give it to the pastor? Because you are going to heaven. Because Why? also the pastor is supposed to die, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because everyone has- but at the end of the day, the pastor did not even die. <laughs> He's very fit. Very fit. He's drinking yeah. Vortic, you know. Yeah, he didn't Good even water. get a drip. You're drinking natural mineral water, you know. I it, it, it goes back to that brainwashing, and I think it's, it all goes back to poverty because you can't have a pastor who preaches every Sunday saying, "Receive your miracle, receive your job, receive your money." Yes, you can receive those things spiritually, but you need to work. So now these people they deceive them because what's funny is when a pastor wants money, like to buy a car, they can announce in church, uh, "Our pastor needs a new car. This one is giving him problems." They want you to give money, but when you come with a problem, he wants you to have faith. Mm. So, he, so what's the what's the religion experience life in Zimbabwe? 
Ah, in Zim, being a pastor is a very good business. Yeah, it's a lucrative business, mm. eh? You can make good cash, yeah? Serious money. I'm talking serious money. Those people, they go to church. So the Ghanaian pastors, they, 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 they come to Zim? Yeah, they've got spiritual children. Ah, they got spiritual children in Zim? Know, yeah. Then it means Ghanaian pastors are too powerful. Because they I, are the spiritual I, I, fathers. I don't know what you guys do there, do in Ghana, but... They are, they are, they are spiritual Ch- fathers. Churches in Zim. Their fathers are, are in Ghana. Huge. Yeah. Wow. One, one of the fathers in Ghana. The other big pastor in Zim, the spiritual father was... So let me Joshua. ask you this. This is going all around. We're, we're talking about something different here. Uh, you heard about this good mafia thing. Yes. And then this pastor is a Hebert or whatever. I don't know. He, the he, angel, no, Hebert, Hebert or whatever. Angel. Yeah. You are from Zim. Yes. When you heard this news, how do you feel? Well, it, it was really touching, you know, but it's not like there's anything you can do about it because when he preaches, when you listen to his sermons, he is um, telling people to have faith, to enter his business classes, uh, to teach them how to make money, how he got to the top, how he started at the bottom and he picked himself up to the top. But then when you see this gold mafia thing, you realize that, no, he, he just got into this business and all of a sudden he became a millionaire it's that easy so you're gonna work for the rest of your life and you're gonna seed he's gonna tell you to seed for you to to get to where to where he is you he will tell you that i was seeding to my spiritual father i was seeding for this i was seeding for this yet no i just, think i have to do a, a live video like a, a serious live session with you because you have a lot to tell uh so when you heard the news about this you bet being a pastor involved in criminality what comes into your mind well, it, 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 it just goes back to how corrupt pastors are and how they deceive you into thinking that he got all that because of because he was praying and he was seeding. It's really sad because on social media, the, 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 the congregation, like the people from his church were actually defending him, saying now this whole thing is fake or maybe... He ah, knew. the spiritual children were defending. Yes, because ah. my question was if he can see... Uh, if he can prophesy the way he does, why didn't he see that these people were fake? Were fake. You're right. You, you know? have a point. Yeah. Why didn't he see that these people were fake and um, they were trying to get information and stuff like that? So the spiritual children were defending him and it just shows you just how much people have been brainwashed. So whatever you say, what they do, these pastors, they start by brainwashing the whole congregation. So it's, it's whatever this pastor says is final. Case yes. closed. Nobody yes. complains. So he just went back to his people and he said, no, I knew. I knew, so I was just playing along. But, well, he, he said a whole lot of stuff. Like, he he brought out a whole lot of secrets and information. So, so how is the, the life in Zimbabwe? Are people really suffering over there? Um, If you have connections, then you have connections, you're fine. But if you don't have, then... You don't have to. have you been a spiritual child before i i think i've never been that spiritual okay i've, I've always like had that you've had a, a daddy thing. before like a daddy papa daddy have you had this before like this is my spiritual dad this is my spiritual no, mom you know no, no, ah, okay no. so you you were you were clever in your spiritual realm my spirituality never went that far ah okay, okay. yeah I, i've always traded with caution um i think it's because the church i grew up in you don't give offering there's no tithe there's no nothing those white government churches and there are people who are very prosperous there like so now when i moved i think when i was 21 that's when i shifted and then you go to this church and they tell you that if you do not seed you're not going to prosper but i'm thinking the church i came from there are people who are very wealthy very wealthy not just rich wealthy but they don't even give The, Mm -hmm. the, the yeah they don't even do anything so you just start asking yourself are they just conning people because people they are not giving anything but they're rich so here they tell you if you do not see it if you do not tithe if you do not i don't don't say there's anything wrong with it if you feel it's good for you it works for you then do it Mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be like they shouldn't make you feel guilty for not doing it you know like if you don't do this you will not achieve this because there are people who don't even go to church so what do you have to say to people who believe too much in this uh, pastor kind of thing all i can say is open your eyes and if you really know that there's a god in heaven who answers everyone because he god gave us dominion to say a word and it will be established he said call unto me and i'll answer you he never said go to your pastor to call unto me you know 
you can call on to unto God and he will answer you. You don't need a middleman. So if you still believe that you need to go through your pastor, you need to do this through your pastor for you to achieve this, then then you're done. Yeah. Hello, what you saying for? So Pacifica Asura Chodo for there. And then now for who could do is unique laser whitening. Unique laser whitening. I will toothpaste to strong qua. What did you choose? Say, Emma will say, A year fita. Na a year fita non suno. Na a ye and cow bonny beer a woe no mu beer. Any tea stain, coffee stain, smoking stain, si beer. Unique laser whitening product. A bay in in a free swam or kama kama kama. The other one is a utu so. Na would it be a goo? Or brush it or so. Now the chu chu send it soon in a kama. Oh yeah, and who who were num general were num sa into for unique laser whitening. I was zero seven nine 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 seven nine two three three zero. Unique laser whitening. I say money sesso. Hello, we go see a for so Pacifica Asura Chodo for there, and then now for our home condom is unique laser whitening.